Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Orange Slice, the podcast of OSU OKC. I am here today with Terry Kleinfelter, Department Head of Construction Technologies at OSU OKC. And this is really one of our more fascinating programs uh, at the campus where you can just really get into industry very quickly uh, in a very cost-effective way. And it's also a very visually interesting program, as we discover uh, whenever we see these things actually happening live. Um, but Terry has been here for 15 years. He's one of the uh, senior uh, <laughs> men on campus, I believe, as far as the the things you've seen us go through here um, as, a, as a campus. And so it's exciting to have you on the show today. Thanks for coming out. Well, I'm glad to be here. Let, let me start off by just, um, could you just kind of tell people what do you kind of do? What are some of the big uh, impacts of your program? You know, people who might be interested in it, what should they know about it? So, um, like you said, been here for about 15 years, uh, the whole time serving in the construction program. Um, over that time, I've had the opportunity to see students come in, um, start the program, finish up and then go on out into industry. And, and given that amount of time, I got kids or graduates in the majority of the general contractors, subcontractors. Um, I have students that start their own business, students that are hiring graduates now. Um, and so that uh, having that amount of time in the program really allows um, for interesting perspective on seeing how um, a two-year associate's degree can have a pretty meaningful impact in quite a few people's lives. You're saying a lot of people you see, not that we don't see some high school students going right into it, but you see a lot of people maybe reskilling into a different industry. Yeah, I'd say the majority of my students are what we classify as non-traditional. And so that's just not your uh, fresh face kid out of a high school program. Um, the majority of them are going to be a full-time employee, full-time mom, full-time dad, full-time anything else and a part-time student. And the ability for the construction program and, and a lot of our other programs here to fit into their life and meet them on their time in their space is what attracts them to our programs. Um, and I've seen kids or students who have been taking classes. Um, they'll stretch a two-year degree into a four-year program, but it allows them to advance in their careers um, get that next job, get that next promotion, change industry. Um, and they're able to work and learn at the same time. And, and if they have a family at home and they have to put food on the table, um, success for them means a lot of different things. And so we try and support that. And one thing you mentioned that you sort of have this uh, bird's eye view, having been here so long of seeing, uh, you know, we have a very cost effective program. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're saying a lot of people maybe have either, maybe they saw their parents go through 2008 or, or that's something they went through in some way. And anyway, you were kind of explaining to us uh, before we went on the air about how that kind of has affected the program. And I thought it was pretty interesting stuff. So so I started here in fall of 2009. And if you were in the construction industry in 2008, 2009, you basically saw the bottom fall out. And seeing the change, um, what I've seen now is – the kids that we're seeing in our programs, uh, the kids either coming out of high school or who've been out of high school, they they don't see the value in spending sixty plus thousand dollars on a four year degree that doesn't have a payback. Um, they saw their parents and folks around them struggle with money in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Those struggles are in the forefront of their minds. So when they're coming to a program like ours, which has a cost of around $15,000 for a two year. Um, they see a, a lower initial cost, um, a lower initial input and a higher outcome because they're able to get out into industry two years earlier than a four year degree. Um, they're able to work while they go to school if they so choose either part-time or full-time because our classes are at night online um, or in at day during the day, they have the ability to see a meaningful, um, a meaningful impact. Um, I had one young man who finished up last, last fall. He was working for Allen construction. Um, when Allen construction found out he was taking classes, 
they gave them a promotion. Now, that promotion came in title only. It didn't come with a paycheck yet. They said, when you graduate, we're going to bump you in salary. And, and just that ability to have that upward mobility because of an education um, that he was taking classes all at night or online um, is pretty significant. Very few programs, at least the construction programs in the state, allow for that, that flexibility. All right. So if people are even already in the industry, they can improve their prospects of it by adding yep. uh, some of the degrees. Now, are is it a deal? I mean, I don't know exactly how it works. Are they are there stackable pieces into it, or is it one two year degree? What type of things are people getting when they're enrolling? So we set it up so in a perfect world, someone will give me a full two years, uh, start to finish. Um, I'd take them from A to Z, and in the means, methods, materials of this industry. Um, the program's set up to flow students into commercial construction, although a lot of my students have ended up in the residential sector um, and making pretty good career choices that way. Um, they go commercial contractor, subcontractor, specialty contractor, which is a pretty large segment of um, our industry. And they can do that all in two years. Now, someone comes in we say someone's retooling, they've got an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree um, from another institution and they come in and they just want to take the technical classes, uh, we can do that too. Um, they can come in, the core part of our programs right at around 30 credit hours. Um, the classes are stacked, so there's intro classes that lead in or feed into other coursework that you need to take in sequence. Um, but the entire program can be taken um, online or at night. Um, so we, we try not to limit the availability of anyone, depending on their lifestyle. Okay. Uh, one thing that's kind of fun that uh, that we do here is we have these construction camps in the summer yep. um, where I think they're mostly high school, because some of them might be middle school age kids as well, can come out and see what this equipment does and work with industry partners and learn about a lot of this stuff earlier than they would otherwise and you know really maybe put themselves in a position to where if they're deciding at 14 15 this is the career i want to be in kind of get a leg up on where they want to go yeah so the camp that you're talking about is construct my future uh, we're actually in process of planning for our third camp which will be in june of this coming uh, year the camp what we're looking at doing is having 80 uh, students this year so we're growing in size uh, students range from 7th, 8th graders. Um, it's a week-long camp. It has a $75 registration fee, and otherwise it's free. Uh, kids, uh, it's a full-day camp. They get fed. Um, but the key is that we're introducing young people to the construction industry. And so the goal of the camp and what the way it got started is industry came and said, hey, we don't have enough people going into skilled trades, the, the construction industry pipeline. Well, that's industry is known that that's going to be an issue. The, the loss of skilled labor, uh, the loss of folks retiring, and there's not enough young people coming in. Well, instead of just talking about the issue, they decide to do something about the issue. And so the camp um, started out with about 50 young people coming in. And to be honest, it was uh, folks from OU's construction program, folks from OSU OKC's construction program, and then a group of industry partners that we've known for a few years that just decided to put on a camp. Um, and it was a really great success. Um, the nice thing about this industry, um, and I've been in this industry my entire life and every aspect of it, um, this industry loves to give back. And so the industry partners, um, the contractors, the material suppliers um, that come and volunteer their time and their personnel and donate money and donate material, um, they're doing that because they understand that this is needed for our industry. So we had about 50 students that first year. We ended up with about 60, 70 students the second year, and we're shooting for 80 students. And the whole idea is consider the construction industry. It doesn't matter if you go to a four-year program, a two-year program, a career tech trade school, or you just go straight to work. It doesn't matter. Just go. Um, and 
we're introducing this career pathway to folks that don't know it exists. Um, the majority of folks that I know that are in construction and myself included had someone in their life, uh, a father, an uncle, a family member that was involved in construction and, and let us understand that this was a career pathway that we could go down and it, it could support a family. If you don't have anyone in your life that's in the industry right now, you, you don't know what those options are. You don't know that you can go out and you can support a family on a single salary if you're working in this industry. And so by doing that and showing people that these young kids, especially seventh and eighth graders at this inflection point in their life, that this is something that's open to them and, and welcoming and fun. Um, we've seen some very, very meaningful impacts. Students um, coming back year after year, uh, students that are pursuing masonry programs um, at the career tech level, students that are wanting to come back and be counselors um, just a few years after. So it's it's been real remarkable. Uh, I'd like to do a pitch. Registration's open um, for the next round of Construct My Future. Um, and so if you know a young person that might be interested, please uh, let them know. I mean, they really seem to have a great time. They seem oh, yeah. like they're really enjoying themselves and learning while they're doing it. But, uh, I mean, if you're a middle school kid, I mean, how often do people let you, you know, smash stuff or put it back together or any of that or get up in a big crane? This is all pretty, I mean, pretty cool anyway, but especially if you're that age where you probably haven't had any kind of exposure to that type of equipment. No, I mean, we let the kids get in construction equipment, backhoes, mini excavators, boom lifts. Um, they get to work hands-on with um, masonry, concrete. Um, they, they're driving nails. Um, they're you know, putting in fasteners. All done in a very safe environment. Um, but it's stuff that I, you know, very few young people have the ability to have access to. And the idea that they're able to kind of get hands-on in this industry. Um, and for the right kid, I mean... If it's something that they want to do, they, they just gravitate to it. They love it. Um, and, you know, we're really trying to impact the next generation of young people coming into the industry. And, and it's a long-term gain. I mean, we're dealing with 7th and 8th graders. Um, even if they graduate high school and go straight in, we're still talking four to five years before we see an impact. But it's meaningful and it's worthwhile and it's something that we need to do. All right. Well, tell us a little bit because we've we've talked about a lot of what you do here, but your personal story, you, you mentioned a bit you had someone in the industry that kind of led you into work, but what's kind of your story of how you got into the industry and then how did you end up here? So um, my father was a cabinet maker, so I grew up working in his, his cabinet shop. So um, it was interesting. He had uh, He tried maybe one or two semesters at associate's degree. Associates College um, back in the day um, wasn't for him, right? And and thankfully, um, he found a pathway in the industry as a cabinet maker that uh, was meaningful. And, and I, I oppose that with my mother, who has two master's degrees and worked in education and healthcare. Um, and so I got to see two sides of it. Um, both those people um, were exceptionally successful in life. Um, both of them had meaningful careers and both of them did it with very different levels of education. Um, and so that allowed me to progress, um, into, um, a career pathway that led into the construction, uh, construction industry, um, doing education background in business, um, then doing education in construction, then coming out here. Um, I mean, the construction industry is a meaningful, um, meaningful aspect for me. Uh, my wife's a commercial um, project manager for a large general contractor here in the city. The majority of the people I associate with have some aspect um, of the construction industry. They, they own a small business. They work for an engineering firm. Um, they do something involved in it. Um, it's something that uh, permeates most aspects of my personal life. Um, and so being able to be here at OSU OKC um, and help introduce young people to that career pathway and the success that they can have in it is, has been exceptionally rewarding. 
All right, all right, very cool. Uh, okay, just to kind of off the cuff, we're going to throw a couple fun questions at you. We feed these kids lunch when they come up here. What's the best lunch? What's the best lunch that they get? And which was one of them your favorite? Is one of them the kids' favorite? Oh, I don't know. So, I mean, if you ask any of the kids, uh, kids are tired of pizza. So, yeah, uh, they get pizza probably uh, three times a week, it seems like, in some settings. So, uh, you throw a hamburger or a hot dog at them, they're going to love that. Um, I think that some of the better food that uh, our uh, in house catering do, uh, their uh, Tex Mex that comes out, uh, you can't beat that. Uh, we are looking at trying to get uh, um, uh, uh, food trucks to come up and feed the kids one of these oh, days because, you know, that's a pretty big aspect of the industry. You know, the 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 burrito truck rolls up and right. honks a horn. Everyone takes a break and goes out to it. So it'd be fun to uh, see if the kids would like to uh, eat off the back of those for one day. Um, but no, it's. You know, the, the best thing about the camp is just seeing how uh, getting to know the kids over the course of the week, because you, you really get to uh, see um, what they kind of gravitate towards in these uh, in these hands on events. All right. Terrific. Well, this has been great. I think we've learned a lot from it and you can find out more at the website. The uh, construction has its own basically uh, sub site on the OSU OKC website, and they yep. have a lot of details about the uh the, how to enroll how to get involved on that end of things uh construct my future is the name of the camp which yep. you probably just google construct my future oklahoma and that'll probably get you pretty close to how you can get all the information about that as well yep um and of course you know follow us on our socials we'll have more uh, as they get closer but i'd like to thank terry kleinfelter for taking the time today to sit in an orange slice share all this information with us uh, again, I've learned a lot, and I think it's been uh, educational all the way around. So uh, join us next week for more uh, from Morning Slice. Thanks for watching.